Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Well, what do you know? It's time for another visit with Valentine. George Valentine, that is. Now, he's the fellow who rents space in the personal columns of your paper, advertising the fact that when you bump into a problem a size too large, don't start taking brave pills. Let George do it. That's what Casey Foster did. He had a problem that was a butte. You know what it was? He had a million bucks that he wanted to give away and couldn't find a taker. Now, I bet you're saying that that's not possible. But it is. And if the maestro will give me a downbeat, I'll have Mr. Foster read you his letter to George. Dear Mr. Valentine, my name is Casey Foster, and I have a very simple problem for you. I have a million dollars. I want to spend my million dollars. I practically want to give it to some people, but Mr. Valentine, they won't take it. They don't want it. So it seems to me there must be something rather wrong with those people, don't you think? You see, Mr. Valentine, this is where the track starts, the junction north of the Chula. Then from there south, through Elmo Junction to Chula City. Then... Down by the Davenport here to the link with the Sonora National... Wait a minute, wait a minute, please. You mean you've laid out these model trains like a railroad? That's what I said, the Desert Central. I've never heard of it. (laughs) I'm not surprised. It's slightly smaller than the Union Pacific. Oh, but you will hear of it, you will. I have great plans for it. Mr. Valentine, that's what I want to buy, the real Desert Central. Oh, so you slowly begin to make sense, huh? Only buying something is a little different from giving your money away, isn't it? No, no, that's the strange part. It's really not so different. You see, I discovered that the asking price for the railroad, lock, stock, and barrel, is a little over 900,000. That's been my ambition, Mr. Valentine, all my life, to own a railroad. Think of it, all mine, from roundhouse to... hold it, please. What happened, Mr. Foster? You try to buy this Desert Central or whatever it is, and they turn you down, is that it? I offered a million, way over the asking price. And it's supposed to be for sale, I know that. But all I got from them was a sort of a brush-off. What do you mean? Well, here. Read that. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Polite double-talk, huh? Who's this man, Sir Talk? I don't know. He signed the letter, that's all. His office is in Chula City. He's apparently in charge. Well, maybe there are reasons why they don't want to sell. Or maybe you didn't make it clear in your letter that you... I wrote again. And this time they haven't even answered. No, no. Instead, they hired a private detective. They did what? Yes, now I'm being watched. As though it were a crime to have a million dollars to interfere or pry into their little operation. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Valentine. I'm driving down there to see those people in person. Tonight. You're going to follow me down. I haven't the slightest idea what's going on, but I mean to find out. Okay, I don't blame you. And whether they like it or not, we're going to buy that road. Do you understand? All my life I've wanted to own a railroad. Uh, This is my chance. And you're going with me to see that no one stops me. Say, did you ever hear anyone so determined about something as old man Foster is about spending his million dollars? I hope it's a good investment, just like I hope you'll give a listen to this bit of advice. Well, let's get back and see how Mr. Foster is doing. So far, so good, I guess, because there's George and Brooksy following his car at full speed. Oh, oh. George, are you getting sleepy? No, I'm all right. Foster must drive at a pretty good clip, though. Oh, well, he left half hour before we did. Yeah, well, go on back to sleep, Angel. Nothing but cactus in these parts. Don't you want me to drive for a while? No. No, we won't be there until long after midnight. So you might as well get some sleep. George! Take it easy. It's all right. 
Alice Forster. What? Yeah, there on the road. Valentine! Valentine, is that you? Yeah. What's the matter? You have a flat tire or something? No, no, there's nothing wrong. No, except you almost got run over, that's all. Well, I, I, I want to show you something. Most beautiful view I've, I've ever seen. Uh, get out, Miss Brooks. Uh, come over here. View? View of what? The black shadow of some black sand in the middle of a black desert? Oh, we're going coyote hunting, huh? Over there, in the moonlight. There, by the old abandoned siding. See? A freight train. That's the number two engine. Makes the night run. But it's a Malin with 40 A freight train with six boxcars. Parked in the middle of the desert. <laughs> Business must be good. Come on, it's cold out here, and we've still got some driving to do. But George, why? Huh? Why would they stop like that, right out in the middle of nowhere? I don't know. Ask the expert. I don't know either. Okay, let's find out. Hey, hey, you up there, you the engineer. Well, would you look what climbed out of the prairie dog holes? A beautiful dame. You're the engineer of this streamliner? Or were you riding the rods, baby? Ought to be careful doing that, sister. Rattlesnakes will bite you. Look, smart Mister, boy. Mister, you want lefty. Go find him. Me? I'm just a fireman, brakeman, train guard, orchestra, and window watcher. Substitute at that. It's a real big-time railroad. <coughs> Come on. You want him, I'll show you. Well, uh, we just He's wanted... back here someplace. Came back to look at a hot box. Hot box? There's your mystery. One of the back cars here, I guess. I should worry. I'm working on the middle part of this course. Listen, baby, I'll play it for oh, you. Oh, you don't have to. Oh, now, don't be like that. My name's Paolo. And the only reason anybody ever hires me is because I make such beautiful music. Listen. Oh, brother, this is a real fine railroad you want to buy, Mr. Foster. Well, maybe it isn't so efficient. Ah! But it... <laughs> Sleeping again, huh, Cy? Here, meet Cy Ibri, folks. Lord of the caboose. Conductor, straw boss, meanest man, this side. Thank you, Paolo. What do we stop for? Who are these people? Oh, excuse me, lady. Where till I get my shoes on? Oh, don't let us bother you, friend. Uh, see here, you run this train. I'd like to meet you. My name is Foster. I'm going to buy this line. You're what? Yes, spy it. He's nuts. Come in, come in. I've been asleep since Elmo Junction. Maybe I didn't hear you right. Excuse the appearance of things, lady. Oh, that's all right. Here, coffee's nice and hot. Have a cup. Holy smoke, mister. You mean it? You gonna buy this thing? Yes, that's my intention. You see... I hope you understand about a man falling asleep. Train stops so many times, you get so you don't notice. Lefty, he can take care of anything I can. Had a hot box on that 418 car. <laughs> Blasted old equipment. How can they expect me to maintain a schedule? Here, have some cream, lady. Best coffee this side of Rock Island. Mm, just to cool it a little, thanks. But things would be different with some new management, I'm telling you. Foster, that's what you said, wasn't it? New blood. Well, well. Here, sit down, Mr. Foster. Wait a minute, all of you. If we walk from the engine to the caboose here, where's the engineer? Well, Paolo here says he's working on a hot box. Holy smoke, look what time it oh, is. We must have walked past that car, 418. Where was he? <laughs> There's two sides to a train, mister. Yeah? Show me. George! Just lying there, out cold. Lefty! Get out of the way, mister. He looks dead in the no, door. He's all right, old timer. Take it easy. Yeah, I'm fine, just great. Well, what happened? For heaven's sake, what happened? Lefty! Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, stop it. I'm all right. Get away from you. There's blood on your head, friend. Yeah. How'd it get there? Don't you know? No, a hot box. You come back here to... You trip. Your... that's what you did. Here, see? Tripped on a tie and smacked your bean against the journal box. See where the dirt's wiped yeah, off? Yeah, I guess that's all it was. Well, if you're all right, let's get rolling then. We still got a schedule to make. And this thing's still frozen up tighter than a wet corset. No, 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 get away from me, mister. I'm all right. No, you're not. Stand still. What? Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, here we are. What's the rock for? Lefty, you didn't fall. The blood's on the back of your head. What's that? And here's the rock that did it. Only the question is, way out here in the middle of the desert, who was holding the rock? 
If it wasn't a coyote, that's a cinch. Hey, Mr. Valentine, you know there are stories and legends about railroads. In fact, this very line in the old days was supposed Mr. to have Mr. Foster, I don't want to be disrespectful, but any talk about a haunt on a railroad is just... Well, uh, <laughs> Anyway. All right, boys, the heck with a hot box. Just kick this car loose back on the old side. Kick it loose? Sure, let the morning run pick it up. Seal car, nothing but farm machinery. It'll be all right. I'll buy that. Let's get out of here. Me too. The sooner the better. What do you think, Mr. Valentine? What happened? I don't know. Nothing stolen, nothing touched. Just a man almost killed, and not even he knows. You sure you want to buy this railroad? I told you nothing will stop me. After all, this wasn't important. This couldn't have had anything to do with their not wanting to sell. You sure about that? The Desert Central, huh? Haunted railroad. Okay, Mr. Foster, come on. Let's see who's next to get hit by a ghost. <laughs> You know what I'm hoping? I'm hoping that if that ghost has any rocks left, he'll use them on that harmonica player. I didn't like those remarks he made at Brooksy one bit. On the other hand, I do like what you're about to hear, and I know you will too. Back to George Valentine. The Desert Central Railroad. It isn't much, but it's worth a million dollars to your client, Mr. Foster. What it might be worth to an engineer who was slugged by no one out in the middle of nowhere is another matter. Yes, if your name is George Valentine, you may not buy the idea of a haunted railroad, but you'll agree it's a mystery why there should be so much trouble around the Desert Central, or even so much trouble buying it. Now, where is this Foster? We left him at the hotel, Mr. Sertan. We told the desk not to ring him this Oh, morning. you did. Well, that's very considerate. So you can come snooping around my office alone. You're in I charge before... here at Chula City, aren't you? You own this so-called railroad. Oh, don't insult either one of us. I do not. Oh, yes, I'm the one who answered Foster's and letter. And the brush off, huh? Yeah, well, one thing at a time now, won't you? Now, my innocent friend, the banks, own this railroad just like they own practically every other broken down short line in the country. The banks? Yeah. There's a little thing called receivership, my dear. It has nothing to do with the telephone company. I was given this infernal job by a banker in Chicago who told me there was a golf course in this town. Don't you understand? I'm just a hired hand sent here to do a job. Got enough problems without you acting like one. Uh huh. Problems like Lefty getting slugged last night? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll have to look into that, I suppose. I don't know what goes on down here. Are you and I are strangers in this part of the country, Mr. Valentine. All right, now, now, I'm not changing the subject. Road has a detective. I'll put him right on it. On this lefty incident, I mean. I think it's a good idea, but we already know about your detective. You, do, huh? you had him investigating Mr. Foster up in the city. Oh? <laughs> yeah. That's what you're down here early to find out about. Yes, yes, I did. My conscience got the better of me. I thought I'd better investigate, see if Foster was a real person, and if he was sane. Sane? I don't understand. This railroad loses $50,000 a year. Wow. Yeah. You see, unless a man were crazy or unless he had some other idea of how to make money on the road, people just don't buy into bankruptcy, do they? Yeah? So, blame me for being puzzled, Valentine? Mr. Valentine? Valentine, for the love of heaven, I'm a busy man. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Just watching the trains out there, that's all. Happen to notice they brought that car 418 in. What, George? Mr. Valentine, I am patiently trying to explain to yes, you... Yes, yes, that... I heard you all right. Why does my client want to own something that loses money? Yeah. Well, it just occurred to me there might be more ways than one to make money on the Desert Central. See you later. George. Phone force to get him down here, Angel, will you? I'll see you in a few minutes.
Hey, maestro. Hey, Bono. Come here a minute, will you? Some railroad. They jab a flare into the side of a car. The heck with a fire hazard, huh? Look, Paulo, if I lighted a flare and jabbed it into the side of you, would you Hi, talk? Hi, mister. What's your trouble? I don't want to interfere with that musical bubble gum, but I'm curious. Sure, so am I. This is the same car, isn't it, 418? I noticed the burned-out flare, that's all, the spike. Well, they brought the car in all right on the morning run, if that's what you mean. Yeah, that's it. Morning run. Why'd you have a flare in next to the door in the morning? If there's one thing you don't need in the desert in the morning, it's more light. I like music. It's simpler. There was no flare here last night, I know that. So who tampered with the car during the night? Mister, you're crazy. Nobody tampers with anything in the desert except Gila monsters. Look, a car full of machinery, it'd take a crane to lift. Hey, hey, wait a minute, what are you driving at? Curious about the other side of the car, that's all. That flare would only be there from somebody loading it at night, wouldn't it? Yeah, but nobody's been in this car. A seal's unbroken on the other side, too. Just curious, that's all. Hey, this road goes on south, doesn't it? Ties in with the Sonora National. That's a Mexican line, isn't it? Yeah. That's where this load's going, I guess. How to make money on a railroad. Hey, wait a minute. You want to get through there? It's easier to go through the open box car here. Oh, yeah, thanks. The doors ought to be shut anyhow. Don't jump down there yet. Hmm? Why not? I wanted to show you a new tune on my harmonica, that's oh, all. Oh, look, Buster. Yeah. I... Hmm. Hope it still plays all right. Hi, baby. Oh, it's you. I was looking for Mr. Valentine. He came out here a second ago. Wait till I shut this car up. <sighs> Won't I do? Well, not exactly. I don't know Afraid I haven't seen him, baby. Sounds like we're pulling out now. Sorry. Well, I'm sure he was right Save here. Save me an evening, will you, baby? Put that thing down, will you? You smell smoke? Sure. Put it down, I said. Oh, my mistake. How to hold an audience, huh? It's a gun, Mac. Okay, okay. Play your harmonica. See if I care. Don't worry about the smoke. There isn't any fire anymore. We're nice and comfortable on a siding now. On a siding? And this is where I came in, isn't it? We had a hot box again, I suppose. The train shunted us off here and left us. I suppose. Okay, Buster, tell me something. If you wanted to give a car a hot box, you'd tamper with that thing out there you call a journal box, wouldn't you? I mean, if you threw sand or something into the journal box, isn't that the end of the bearing? Wouldn't that make it freeze up and lock or catch on fire or something? What's the name of that girl of yours? Huh? She's pretty. What are you going to do, open the door? Sure, why not? I don't like the air in here. Everything all right, Paolo? Sure, why not? It's all set, ready to roll. Sure. Oh, you got friends, huh? What's he been doing? Fixing the hot box? That's all you have to do, isn't it? Let it cool off and change the packing or dump in some oil or something. Pretty view, ain't it? Boy, what a country. Yeah. Sunset, huh? I had a long sleep. Nothing else to do. What's over there in the gulch? A house? <laughs> no, just some friends. Building a fire to keep warm. Gets cold out here at night. Well, what are we waiting for? What are they waiting for? Okay, I'll tell you. A truck, maybe. Yeah, we're close to the highway again, aren't we? They're waiting to help load up this car with something besides farm machinery. Something from Mexico, maybe. And they're waiting to slap a fresh seal on this car after they load it. Search me? I just work here. Yeah, what's your job? You get rid of me? Or do you leave that up to the boss? Shut up. Listen. You hear your truck coming? I don't. Get back in the car. Oh, a train, huh? Well, that's more like it. They'll see us and stop and then... <laughs> That you, Si? Sure, me. Hello. How's the sour belly? Who knocked you off? I got 
schedule to maintain. What kind of a railroad? Hot box. Keep your shirt on. Night train will pick her up. So now I gotta waste time on you. The and... midnight run, I said. They told me the dispatcher'd have a midnight picker up. All right, all right. Break up everybody's schedule. Wait up, Lefty. Let her roll. <laughs> Okay, so you got rid of him. <laughs> that was your last chance, Mike. Sure, sure. But I'll tell you a funny thing about being in a car with farm equipment, though. Now, look. Don't get yeah. it. Uh, That's enough music out of you for a while, Buster. Hey, Paolo, nice work. You got rid of number nine fast enough, huh? Paolo, you hear me? You all right? Oh, brother, where is that thing? I haven't played one since I was a kid. Paolo! Get a new tone, will ya? Throw that thing away and come over to the fire. Oh, brother. May Petrillo forgive me. Why, it wasn't bad. Now what? Over here, other side. Cy Ebry, how'd you get here? Dropped off my caboose. What do you think? I'd better have a look around. That Miss Brooks of yours told me the number of that car, and when I noticed Don't mind it... that. Get out of here. Holy smoke, Paolo. He's all right. It's getting dark, but let's stay on the other side of the car. What in the name of tarnation is this railroad? There's a gang over there waiting to load up this car, waiting for a truck. Truck? Yeah, sure, that's the whole idea. Give a car a hot box. It's dropped off. Truck comes along to add a load that's already on a bill of lading. Now, wait a minute, young fellow. Wait a now, minute. listen. How carefully did they ever check cars that switch over to the Mexican line just south of here? This road's got a good reputation, mister. Oh, I see what you mean. Customs only run a spot check. And when a car even has a seal on it? Wait a minute. Headlights. Guess that's the truck coming now, huh? Yeah, there'll be too many guys. We're not going to do anything. But that Paolo in there, he's too dumb He's not to... the boss, and the whole road isn't in on it. Hey, truck's turning, coming down this way. Yeah, okay, take it easy. They can't see us. Hey, Cy, tell me something quick, will you? That siding where you stopped last night, how far south is it from Elmo Junction? What? 32, 33 miles. Only what in time? Hey! Yeah, that's no truck. Mr. Sertok's car. Oh, Miss Brooks. Well, they were starting to look for you. They was worried... Come on, come on, run. Well, they're getting out of the car. Run, I said. Get back in, sir, talk. Keep your motor running. George! Avery, what's going on out here? Get in there, I said. They see me. Those men seen me, Valentine. What men? Get in, get in, all of you. You too, Cy. Come on. Now, Mr. Valentine... From here on, it's a job for the sheriff, Mr. Sir, talk. A bright boy on your railroad has been making a little money on the side, that's all. What? Get the car turned around. Hey, there! There they come! They won't hurt us as long as we got the boss along with us, will they, Cy? Now, you see here... Cy, last night you had piping hot coffee on the stove, and it tasted good. Apparently, it hadn't been boiling. But you claim you've been asleep since Elmo Junction, 33 miles. A good hour or more of this run. Hey, Cy! But a fire would have burned down in that time. So you were really awake, Cy. Yeah, it was you that slugged Lefty that put Paolo to watching 418 in case I came snooping around. You dropped off just now to make sure the final load went through all right. Hey, what's the matter? Hey, stop! Go! They got me! Oh, no, you don't, Buster. This thing I took away from Paolo was no harm. Hey, stop it! Hang on, everybody. We're getting away from here. Now relax and don't look so lonesome, Cy. We'll be back to meet your friends very shortly. You know something? I sure would like to know what's behind all this falderall of freight cars with hot boxes and stuff. Now, we know that old Cy was behind it all, but why? Well, maybe if we listen to this a minute, we'll find out why. That's it, Valentine. They got the last one. Boy, everything loaded in that truck from contraband to stolen goods. All headed for Mexico for sale, huh? Yeah, but what about Paolo? Oh, he's all right. Came out of that bump on his head. So mad it's Cy for getting him into all this. All right, it's done now. It's not important. It's what? Now, Mr. Foster, when I find one of my own employees... Calm been... down, Sir Tuck. 
The uh, sucker here still wants to buy it. It it loses money, you know. What else is money for? I like railroads, don't you? Well, if there was any other business in the... Well, all right, Mr. Foster. Come over to my car. We'll talk business. Okay, step on the starter, Angel. We'll stick to the highways. (laughs) Yes, George. Hey, uh, that guy, Paolo, thought you were, uh, kind of cute. Huh? Oh, George. Yeah, but he didn't have anything that I haven't got. Yes, George? Listen. Oh, no. Here she was, all set for some sweet talk, only to get some sour music instead. Say, I'll bet you if George took Brooksy for a moonlight ride in a canoe, he'd bring his fishing pole along. Oh, well. All of which brings us down to the fact that Robert Bailey stars as George Valentine, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. The story was written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now, this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine, when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. (laughs) ¶¶ 